Hi Scorpio, welcome to your November 2019 astral update. It's Rena here. So this is a month for most Scorpios to have their solar return or as we would say their birthday. And you're coming off of a new moon that's in late October, October 27th to be exact, at an early degree, four degrees of Scorpio. And so right after the new moon occurs, there's going to be a um, Mercury retrograde. So I'm recording this before the end of October. So it is in the future for me and maybe a lot of people hearing this. So this Mercury retrograde on Halloween on the 31st is actually in Scorpio as well. And um, so therefore it's in your first house. And let me see exactly what degree it is. I believe it's like 27 degrees. So it's a late degree of Scorpio. And so this means that it being in your first house and going into the month of November, Scorpios are kind of rethinking something basic about themselves. And this can include appearance because the first house can be the body, but it can also be about um, something that you are doing when it comes to promoting yourself. So an example would be if you're looking for work and you maybe have worn certain types of you know, a a certain style of clothing or just um, promoted yourself in a certain way, you may choose to do things differently thinking that it'll get a better result. Um, Mercury retrogrades are times to kind of like reflect on something in order to see if it's really continuing to work out. In general, I would say that since it's in your sign, if you have anything that doesn't seem like it's going uh, as it should, not to worry because in a few weeks it will likely get sorted out or within a month's time, you know, we could actually say. So I would rather just keep it general and talk about uh, any plans that you have moving forward and, and things like that. You might find that they work better after um, November 20th when when it, when the Scorpio Mercury and Scorpio goes direct and uh, interestingly the degree that Mercury is going direct on the 20th is at 11 degrees 11 is a master number and um, it's a number that's associated with um, spirituality teaching and so if anything like that you know you you might have seen 1111 a lot of people see that or even like 1 111 I've I've seen I mean it's a joke now I've seen it so many times um my life path number is 11 um so even with the degree of a um particular transit, we can also kind of derive some kind of meaning from it. And, um, that, that certainly is something that I, I, um, take notice of. It's a, the number 11 is very intuitive and it's interesting because even though you're not supposed to reduce master numbers, it breaks down, I mean, if you did break it down, it would break down to two. So it's kind of like a higher octave of the number two. And um, in the Tarot, the number two card is um, the High Priestess. So there's that that connection with the intuitive um, sensitivity. Um, so anyway... Um, That's what's happening with uh, Mercury. And, of course, the sun is in your sign. 
for most of the month of November. Oh, and of course, November is an 11 month. So um, there's that 11 again. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, the sun is in Scorpio for most of the month. And um, Venus on the very first day of November goes into Sagittarius. So if you are listening in October, Venus is in your sign, but it goes into that second house on, on the very first day of November. And that's great because um, Venus rules the second house. So Venus transiting through a, a particular house can bring financial rewards with it because it has that connection to money and to um, luxury. And, you know, it also is connected to love, of course, but when it's in its own house, that could indicate that money is flowing better. And of course, all the planets are that go into Sag will also um, reflect some kind of an emphasis on the material. This is an earth house, the Taurus rules. And um, so you may attract money easier, uh, including earning it uh, in an easier way. Um, you may be spending money on luxury items, as that is also ruled by the second house, your possessions or luxury things of luxury that, you know, maybe are not essentials in life, but something that you want to treat yourself to. And maybe that has some connection with your birthday that you decide to do that. There's going to be a um, full moon on the 12th of November. And this is at 19 degrees of, Scor of, <laughs> of Taurus. And Taurus is your opposite sign, Scorpio. So, uh, that is going to be in the seventh house of committed partnership. So full moon, illumination, um, gaining insights, both, you know, we could say intellectually, but intuitively with the moon, the full moon, but also heart centered with the emotions that are generated. So um, this can have a, a very positive effect things can come to a head if there has been any kind of, um, I don't know, lack of communication between you and a significant other, there might be some event or maybe it's, you know, that, that acts as a catalyst that, that kind of heightens the emotions enough to make you and or them, the other party, much more um, willing to put your cards on the table and uh, talk about what's going on or um, sometimes full moons reveal secrets and things that have been kept uh, hidden. Full moons can bring a culmination, an ending. Now, Usually when I think of that, I think that two people have been struggling and they finally decide that that's, that they're, they're calling it quits. But it, to me, it's not the case that it would normally be something out of the blue. On the 19th, Mars goes into your sign. So for over half the month, Mars is in the 12th house. Mars isn't really um, well suited to the tw 12th house. I think Mars is much more comfortable in the first house. Um, Mars rules Aries, which is the, yeah, Mars <laughs> has to rule the first house, I, I guess, since Aries rules this house. And um, this is about asserting yourself. So something may have happened, um, Scorpio, that made you feel like you had to kind of hide your anger for some reason, that you had to kind of bite your lip. Um, <laughs> ironically, um, Mars goes into Scorpio the day before Mercury goes direct in your sign. So 
at, when I say bite your lip, you know, with Mercury retrograde, you may be um, rethinking a lot of things that you're uh, on about. So with um, Mars in the first house, it's like you become a warrior. And I would say again, because you it, Mars is one of your rulers along with Pluto. And so this is part of who you are. And uh, this gives you back your mojo uh, at a time when perhaps you have had, you felt, maybe you have felt a bit uh, hamstrung, like you couldn't move forward because Mars was in the 12th house. So it's possible that... Um, you've had to, to, to work on some unfinished business and that this is also symbolized by Mercury retrograde. And, and um, this can even be on the physical level where you want to do some kind of uh, exercise routine. Perhaps it's new for you or uh, more enhanced, more, maybe you, you tried it before and, you need to be more consistent with it. But there's a physicality with Mars. In the first house of the body, which is part of the self, you might be very um, into that type of um, vigorous movement. And but, but also, I have to emphasize that sense of um, aggression, promoting yourself kind of like putting yourself in the fray. Whereas before in, in October and maybe even I have to check how long uh, Mars was in Libra. Perhaps it was, you were more reticent to kind of take uh, inspired action and things like that. And maybe you even second guessed yourself, but now you're raring to go. On the 20th, Mercury does turn direct in that first house, so you resolve something that has to do with um, yourself in general. Maybe um, this is even connected to some kind of um, career move, even though this isn't in the 10th house. Who do you want to be in some cases? Well, you know... Um, I, I look at the first house in terms of predictions and transits as a catch-all house of general change, you know, depending on what, because it is of the self, and to me that can be in a very general sense. The, on the 22nd, um, why did I put solar return? Oh, boy, that's bizarre. Actually, um, <laughs> I put solar return. What I meant was, uh, the sun goes into Sagittarius on the 22nd. Now, as you probably know, the sun goes into a particular sign um, on different dates each year. It doesn't always fall on the 22nd of, um, I'm talking about the sun going into Sag, but this year it does. And um, this is your second house of earned income. So the sun joins Venus. And these are both what we would call more on the positive side in terms of planetary influence because the sun is very all-pervasively positive. If you think about the tarot card, the sun and what it represents, um, just a general sense of well-being, healing, um, positivity, and um, wealth, I mean um, success. And, uh, and Venus has the, you know, the, the goddess of love and beauty. It's harmony. Venus is associated with harmony, attraction. And, um, and also the sun is the will. And so when you put that, it, to me it is like the law of attraction where you're willing things to happen based on your um, intention for them to do so. But there's like a conscious co-creation. So this is a time to get very creative about attracting wealth. And, um, you know, this is not special. Usually 
you will see this happening year after year unless unless Venus is retrograde and it's not that close to the sun. But um, now it happens to be, and this should be very uh, good for you when it comes to money, especially if you are in a situation where you understand some of the key concepts of um, law of attraction and you want to kind of incorporate them into your life. And this is a great time to kind of reflect on that and figure out how you're going to do it. And um, then on the 25th, Venus goes into um, Capricorn. I was actually kind of surprised. Venus has a transit when it's not uh, retrograde of like three and a half weeks. So it kind of like shocked me, but I realize now that, you know, it went into Sag on the first of the month. So there you go. And on the 25th, it, it's right on time for it to go into the next sign. So it goes into Capricorn on the 25th. And therefore, that is your third house. It forms a sextile um, with your sun or rising sign. And that means that um, you manifest things a lot easier. And um, the third house represents anything connected to teaching or learning. So you can get funds to get to train for something. Um, you can get a profit from any kind of teaching, maybe even like tutoring, if you were into that and wanting to do something like that, or even, you know, teaching elementary school. Um, there's also the, this is the house of media communication. So the internet does figure into both the third and the 11th houses, websites, um, and um, getting the word out um, in a way that is pleasing to others. This could even be meeting somebody love-wise online. So online dating is featured here. And the 26th, we have a new moon at four degrees of Sagittarius. And this falls in that second house of earned income. So now we have the sun. We have... Um, the new moon, of course, uh, the new moon is when the sun and the moon are at the exact same degree. So it's going to be at four degrees in that second house. New beginnings when it comes to income streams, um, planting seeds about what it is that you want to do. And then Neptune turns direct on the 27th, and this is going to be in your fifth house of romance. So Neptune and Pisces, oh my goodness. For those um, Scorpios who are single, um, I don't know the exact year that Neptune went into Pisces. I think it was around 2011 or so. But um, it's going to be in Pisces, I think, until 2026 or 27. And so we still have a ways to go. You may have, if you've been single, you may have, you know, been single this whole time because Neptune in the fifth house, if, if it doesn't give you your soulmate, which it, it might, you know, it's such a spiritual influence, it could be something that creates a, a fog around your romantic life in the sense that you might feel as if every person that you try to date turns out to be something other than they claim to be. And that could get pretty exasperating uh, right quick. So especially in the last several months, um, this could be a harsh kind of um, a lesson. I think Pisces had gone, uh, or I'm sorry, Neptune had gone, retrograde back in June or something over, you know, several months ago. And that tends to 
reveal the illusion that somebody has been operating under. And the fifth house is so romantic that that can be a slap in the face to somebody who has really kind of gone gaga over another person. Even though uh, they may have nagging doubts or something in the back of their mind is telling them otherwise. So there might be something where you realize, you've realized that it's just been one thing after the other. And perhaps you resolve something in your mind, um, whether it's noticing red flags up front instead of, bef you know, after you have fallen madly in love with somebody and seeing like, okay, this person, you know, has had no problem like getting drunk in front of me. They probably have a problem because Neptune can attract addicts to somebody um, in, the, in the love houses, the fifth or the seventh houses, um, or somebody who has some kind of like emotional problems, mental health issues, um, things that it's not that you would judge them as being a bad person, but they can create problems for you. If somebody has like wild mood swings and they treat you differently and sometimes they treat you great and then other times they are, you know, abusive to you and you just remember the good times, you know, these, these kinds of things are not that, uh, uncommon and they have to really be looked at because it can wreak havoc on other people's lives. It's not just about the person themselves. And, you know, Scorpios, I think get a bad rap. I think that a lot of you are incredibly caring and that you will, you know, I, I can imagine that there have been many Scorpios who have suffered for love and suffered in love, but, but actually, um, allowed themselves to go through the fire for somebody because they really did care about them. And, uh, so that's a beautiful trait as long as it doesn't destroy you in the process. And perhaps you have seen firsthand how other people's problems can become your problems and, and how that isn't really helpful to either one of you. So Neptune going direct in the fifth on the 27th will <laughs> put on those rose colored glasses again, because you've had kind of, some of you may single, um, Scorpios may have had kind of a harsh, uh, reality check. And, um, and I, and I still think it's a great transit for meeting your soulmates. So there you go. Okay, that's what I have for you, Scorpio. If you would like a personal reading, please check out my um, online store. Um, the link will be below. I've added a new reading, which combines uh, the natal chart uh, reading that I do that's like at least an hour long with a full-length um, tarot reading for a special introductory price. And um, I have other readings as well. I hope that you have a great month. Happy birthday to all of you, October and November Scorpios, and take care. Bye.